So, I don't want to give anybody more money for ferrous sulfate, especially we're going to make my own, much purer. I think it's going to be worthy of dropping the one ounce. So, let's go ahead and start on that. Get gloved up here. Alright. Oh, got my finger in the wrong hole. And I'm knocking the tripod over. Holy smokes. Alright, so let's see here. Nice and gentle with those. Alright. Hold on here. We'll do our uh our weighing in another another container here. So we're gonna go with Mm. Let's go 600. Milliliters of distilled water. Some sulfuric acid. We're going to go with 200 milliliters of sulfuric. Temperature. It's an exothermic reaction, so it gets pretty hot. Got to be careful. Let's see. Just like that, 146, 148. See here, 67, 68 Celsius. So it gets pretty warm, so just be careful with that. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and drop that in here. And let that do its thing. attacking that that iron right off the bat one hundred thirty four fifty eight Celsius cool all right well when that reaction stops here we'll go ahead and filter that out and uh, the sulfuric acid should be dilute enough where it's not going to go through our uh, our filters. And then once it cools off, the crystals should drop out, and we can make some more with the same solution. So let's uh, see where we go. All right, let's go ahead and filter our solution out here. I think I see some crystals forming on the inside of that already. Let me get my arms out of the way here. There we go, look at that. Bunch of them in there. So I don't think I was fast enough. Dun, dun, dun. So they look pretty good. We definitely want to uh, rehydrate them so we can filter them though. Because there's a lot of stuff that I don't want in there when I drop the gold out. So. We'll get to that here in a minute. 
So a lot of this is crystallizing out in the bottom of my flask. So what I'm gonna do is I still have a little bit left in my uh, Buckner funnel. So I'm just gonna switch this all over like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this outside for a second so we can get some crystals to drop out of there. See all our crystals that were coming out of there? Pretty crazy. So I did put a little bit more distilled water in here to absorb some of those crystals with heat that I would typically have. Well, it's a little higher than I would normally have it. Uh, let's see here. So I typically have it like three and a half. We're set to four right now. Um, so we've got a pretty good base. So you can see the separation here. So we've got uh, the base of crystals. So that's what I want. And then we've got uh, some other kind of sulfate there on the bottom. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll heat this solution back up. I may have to switch to cotton here. I may take the top part of my bunk, uh, Buckner funnel off and then just put some cotton, little cotton balls here in the in the edge so I can I can actually uh, pour the solution off hot. And then that should avoid my whole crystallization process here. But uh, like I said, I've got the other one outside. It's kind of hard to see where it's located. Um, bad lighting, so I can't really show it to you. But I will show you when we bring it back inside here in, I don't know, let's say 45 minutes. Um, and we should have some pretty good crystallization on the bottom. All right, so I ended up having to switch. I put uh, three cotton balls in there to plug it up because the crystallization on the filter was just happening so fast. Look at that blocking it right up so those are all good fit uh, all good crystals we'll be able to get those um, I'll have to use some distilled water to absorb them and then uh, basically evaporate them out all right so I've had some uh, distilled water on the heat and it is time to get some more of these crystals here what I'd like to do after we've got some uh, After the crystals come crashing out of solution in the uh, the beaker that I have outside, I'd love to re-put it back in here and absorb it and basically just keep this process going, you know. And we should be able to create quite a bit of um, crystals here, fair sulfate crystals that are, you know, highly pure and filtered nice and clean. So we should have a beautiful gold drop off of this I'm I'm actually really excited as soon as this gets done filtering what I've been doing is basically just running it outside pouring it in that beaker before it uh, um, starts to precipitate out if I'm gonna make this stuff in the future I definitely would want to be able to filter the uh, the fair sulfate right into the apparatus I'd like to keep it in because I could just let it you know pull the top off be able to get to this because if I let it this stuff gets really hard when it uh, precipitates out so you would not want it to harden up on in a flask because it would be very hard to get break it up without pouring water and redissolving it um, so it'd be nice just to be able to put it right in the apparatus that we want the crystals to form in well, we'll put that on the list. That list is uh, <laughs> very long. All right, so I just brought my crystals back in from inside. We're gonna go ahead and pour the liquid back into our original beaker here. This is uh, this is room temperature, so it's been off heat for some time, just so I don't thermally shock anything and break anything uh, that I don't want broken. And as that uh, warms up, hold on. As that warms up, our uh, <clears throat> our solutions to start to absorb some more um, ferrosulfate crystals, and basically we just rinse and repeat until 
we've got as much uh, ferrous sulfate as we need. So let me break this up and uh, I'll show you a close up of it. All right, there they are. Ferrous sulfate crystals. Got a little bit of moisture left in there. Um, we could probably dry them out. Um, maybe evaporate it for a while. But I'm not going to worry about that until we get uh, as much stuff as we can out of this batch and uh, set us up for our next gold drop. What is going on, guys? That is... Uh, a lot easier than I ever anticipated. Well, hold on, hold on. It took me a little bit to get the whole, um, what I found works best, at least for me, is basically to boil it. And while it's hot, I use a coffee filter instead of any, the cotton, the, it just builds up so fast, those crystals, it makes it like impossible to filter um, without it starting to crystallize in the flask, pain in the rear. So what I found out is that if I boil it, pour it off while it's still, eh, I mean, I, I let it come down just a, just a little bit so it's not like spitting and spewing out of the, out of the top there, you know. And um, it absorbed basically all the crystals in the flask. Um, and it didn't, it didn't crystallize in the filter or anywhere else until I got it basically in the beaker and where I wanted it to precipitate its crystals. Um, but man, that took a while to figure that one out. I tried a couple different things and, uh, but I'm finally in a rhythm. I almost have, um, all of those nails eaten up and turned into crystals. Um, it's actually a really nice solution. It, I mean, it seems like you can just keep reusing, reusing, reuse it, reuse it. And then it just keeps going. It's like the energizer. But I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> uh, we'll stay with it. Anyways. Um, so I'm going to have to store that. I think I'm going to get a, a separate uh, bottle for that so that we can keep that solution for, for further, um, refinings because as of right now, it, it seems to just keep on going. But, uh, so I want to thank you guys for pointing me in that direction, making it, uh, it's not expensive to buy, but I think the stuff I buy is only 20% and I imagine this is going to be close to 99 percent right i mean we're that's pure crystals so that's it for today <laughs> thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one